I started with a 1000 watt motor, now I have a 500 watt motor. Why would I ever buy a 500 watt motor when a 1000 watts isn't that much more expensive? I wanted to make a bike that weighed less and felt more like a bike. The lightest bike I own weighs 27 pounds. The 500 watt weighs 52 pounds. Part of that almost double weight increase is because it has a steel frame, which was a surprise to me when I pulled it out of the shed to convert it. But it all comes with the territory of taking what you can get when it's free on the side of the road. This 1000 watt aluminum frame weighs 70 pounds. Now, I didn't bother weighing my motors when I got them, and I don't feel like taking them off. Clearly, the rear motor is smaller, and it felt lighter, but most of the weight is in the battery. 14 pounds versus 8 pounds at 20 and 13 amp hours. Now, the 20 amp hour is a couple years old at this point and has almost 3,000 miles on it, but it is interesting that in the 12 or so miles both of these traveled before I actually did the speed test, they both drain batteries at the same rate. It's just that one takes 25 minutes to go 10 miles and the other takes 30 minutes. Right now both of these are 47 volts, which is probably 60% battery, but let's just say the point of this video is to test the difference between 500 watt and 1000 watt e-bike motors at 50% versus 100% charge. Which, of course I planned it this way, racing two e-bikes against each other with batteries half empty so I could get disappointing results just to save something for the end. Now, a 1000 watt motor isn't twice as fast as a 500 watt, but pretty much the first thing you're going to do when you get any e-bike is disable the speed limiter. When you reach a certain speed, the motor cuts out. Every controller is different, but it's usually in a hidden menu where you have to get into it the first five seconds of turning it on. With this one, it's holding both arrow buttons down, and this one is holding the M button. This one has a max speed of 25 miles per hour, and it was 15 miles per hour by default. And this one was set to, I think it was 29 miles per hour, it could have been 25, and its max speed is like 44 miles per hour. That's just when the motor would cut out. We're not actually reaching that speed in reality. This will be a 0 to 25 mile per hour test. Not pedaling, so it's just the motor. Nineteen seconds to twenty five miles per hour. Seventeen seconds to twenty five miles per hour. Mm, a little surprise. Those times are really close, especially when it took 3 seconds for the 500 watt to go from 24 to 25 miles per hour, but also, I couldn't get the 1000 watt to go over 25 miles per hour, which means most of its power exists somewhere above 60% charge. What's interesting though, is I then raced them again with pedaling, and they both got the exact same times. I don't know what to make of that. You'd think my pedaling would matter more when the battery's low, especially at the start. I'll be doing the test again at 100%. You know what they say about when you're doing science, if you don't like the results, just keep doing it again until you get the result you want. And that's kind of how science works. You're not gonna get tenure if you don't predict your hypothesis correctly. It's got to be what people expect, right? Wow, yeah, you just proved the thing that everybody thought was true. That's what science is. A bunch of prima donnas in lab coats just wanting some love from their peers. You know what these attention-loving scientists hate the most? Is the precedent that's been set 
where they're all just referred to in general as scientists, when what they're really thinking is, God damn, can I get some recognition? Buying a 1000 watt versus 500 watt. Right now, an updated version of the 1000 watt, just the bare bones, costs $585. The battery motor would be sold separately. And if you want the same battery rack now, it has a Yo's label on it. And same for 500 watt, costs $405 as a combo kit, but then you have to buy tires and a sprocket. It's a chance to get exactly what you want rather than what's in the kit, but now you're paying like $460. It's also a chance to reuse stuff you may already have, too. A lot of the power an e-bike has depends on it being extremely light. A thousand watts is only about one horsepower. And unless you're a car nerd, horsepower stats are as meaningless as the details of your health insurance plan. And if your first thought is, hey, that's not true, I love comparing health insurance plans, so I know I'm getting the best deal for me. Well, you're a health insurance nerd. Nobody likes it when you talk about how you know health insurance so much, nerd. <laughs> so when you're looking at horsepower stats, just think of one e-bike. Even though that's just as meaningless because there's more to e-bike stats than how many watts the motor is. 48 volts versus 36 volts. These are both 48 volts, and volts is like water pressure. You want to be able to output as much electrical pressure as the motor demands. 48 is just an average. When the battery is fully charged, it should be about 52 to 54 volts. And when it's almost empty, it should be about 36 volts. And as we've experienced, the available volts plays a noticeable role in acceleration and top speed. Now that these batteries are at 100%, let's go back out there and get this over with. Five hundred watt, no pedaling. Zero to twenty-five is six seconds faster than at fifty percent. And with pedaling, is nine seconds faster than pedaling at fifty percent was. Thousand watt, no pedaling. Zero to twenty-five is five seconds faster than it was at 50%. And with pedaling is eight seconds faster. The top speed of the 500 watt is 25 miles per hour. And obviously any scientist worth their weight in science would do these tests on a level road. I'm not an idiot. What does that even mean? The top speed of the 1000 watt was 33 miles per hour and that took 17 seconds. By the way, that's like pedaling. Both of them pedaling. The conclusion. There's more variety available when buying 1000 watt motors, and if you're just comparing motors to motors, they aren't that much more expensive, even though you can find 1000 watt battery combo kits that are cheaper. So really, here's the thing. A thousand watt is better. It's a little bit more power. It's like five, six miles per hour faster on average. Could cost the same. 500 watt is really about keeping the weight down and being fine with slower speeds. Maybe not even wanting faster speeds. A lot of the like purpose-built e-bikes too also have like speeds they're supposed to be by default. You know, I'm not really sure what the deal is with the whole like speed unlocking thing. It's like certain bikes or whatever their class, these different things and 19 miles, 29 miles per hour. <laughs> Allegedly e-bikes aren't allowed to go more than 29 miles per hour. You can say the same thing about scooters, but obviously you can also unlock those too, but it's not a software thing, it's like a mechanical thing. So like, yeah, really, what's the deal with it? It's kind of like how, like, you have to have mirrors on cars, but then once you own your car, you can take them off. Laws vary by state. I am not a legal nerd. 
And you can go faster. There's a lot more 1500 watts and whatever. Feels like they're more common now, especially like the fat tire ones, which is really, I mean, I would go for that. But even though the 500 watt is only $125 cheaper than a similar 1000 watt build, it's better at what I want it to be. It feels more like a regular bike and can be used casually. I have a bike that I don't really care much about. I keep it outside. I just use it to go places quickly. I don't bother locking it up. I don't care if it gets stolen. This isn't exactly like that. I do care about this bike, but it is cheaper looking. I'm not as concerned with something happening to it, even though I don't want anything to happen to it. But it is a good commuter bike. It's like a city bike. I can lock it up to a bike rack. I can wrap a plastic bag around the battery if it's raining. It's not as precious. It's good for using it to just get somewhere. And I said I wasn't gonna put fenders on this bike, but I think I will. And like really big fenders, good fenders. These are better than nothing, but I still get water flying up and going straight into my headlights. And the back, I added a sheet metal thing to it uh, on its own. The other one would be unsatisfactory, like way too thin. Anyways, next week will be front versus rear drive. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that will be my last video for a while. I'm running out of money and my Adobe Creative Cloud is expiring. So I'm gonna lose my video making tools and I won't have time to make videos because I need to make money. So while I'm away, go to dot dot matrix on YouTube, scroll back in time to 2020. I wanna mow the lawn. Maybe it relaxes me. Now that I'm actually monetized and so desperately need money, it would be helpful. Uh, those videos could use more views. I'm not saying that they're all great, but there's some moments. I think uh, analytics has kind of set me adrift. Damn these Dell stars! I think I used to go for bigger and take more risks. And now I'm just kind of trying to be consistent. Breaking the fourth wall! So it would be good to take a break to be able to reset myself. Remember what I used to think was important and not be so preoccupied with trying to figure out how this YouTube system works. The point is, if you haven't seen it, it's new to you. And, um... Rather than wait for YouTube to tell you to watch some new post that won't be coming. What's the point? Uh, why not, like, go hunting? So, uh, Tim, he's the Tom Belushi of the movie. He really gives it the pranks to the warden on his way out. Just give it a try. It's what we used to do. Like, 20 years ago, we had to go hunt for everything on the internet. There was no, like, recommendations. It was just like, this is where all the stuff is. Go find something you like. Here it is, everybody. The world's greatest website. You'd think all the noises would be annoying, but they're not. But I still have at least one more new video in me, and it's coming out next week. I'm going away, cause I'm out of money. I'm going away to make more money. Will I be back? I can't really say As it turns out You can't underestimate The importance of money This is goodbye, goodbye, goodbye The end is now and now's the end I'm going away To make more money Will I be back? I can't really say as it turns out You can't underestimate The importance of money Whatever it is we did it, we got it done. Oh my God, there's like a tiny mouse that just ran in front of me. Scary stuff. You know what I think about mice? I think they are adorable outside, but when they're inside, they are the most disgusting thing I've ever seen.